What is your net worth? How valuable are you? What if I told you that you have more wealth than Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates? Would you believe that? You see, I believe that you do if you have faith in Jesus Christ. And the parable we're going to look at today lays this out even clearer. But the reality of our true value, to a great extent, will rely on what we value the most in our own lives. I mean, what is most important to you? you know, for some people, money might be most important, or things. Or it might be their health, or their looks, or taking vacations, or time. It could be a, a lot of different things. But those things are temporary. Everything in this world is actually very temporary. You know, when I was young, my father took us camping every summer. And as we went north, we'd go by this place called Treasure City. And it was a very interesting place. It kind of had a lot of little trinkets. And I had this fascination with, with pirates and, and buried treasure. And I'd, I'd see the, the signs heading up there. And I always wanted to stop. And a couple times, he allowed us to go in there and we'd buy these trinkets. But then they'd fall apart, obviously, or that you'd lose them. And after I grew up and had kids, I brought them there a number of times. I would buy them some of those trinkets. And recently, I stopped at the store. In fact, just a few weeks ago, I stopped there. And I looked around the store, and I realized, for the most part, this is just a bunch of stuff. Stuff that kind of lasts a while, but then it kind of goes away. You buy something, and then the excitement goes away fairly quickly. I didn't buy anything. But it made me think. You know, the things of this world, they come and they go. For example, if you buy a new car, that it's exciting for a while. The car smells good and, and time goes by. But eventually that car loses that new car smell unless you buy a special scent for it. The, you know, the paint starts getting shipped. The engine begins to gradually you know, lose some of its pep as time goes on. Everything in this world seems to be that way. Everything's temporary. Even money loses value. A dollar today has less value than a dollar in the past. Things in the world, they come and they go. They lose their value. Well, today, I want to talk about something that has unlimited value. Something in which the value never runs out that we have something so valuable that we really should be living in joy each and every day, each and every second of our lives. And sometimes I think that we take what I want to talk about today so much for granted. It comes from Matthew chapter 13. And I want to begin with the first part of this parable from Jesus. And again, they're kingdom parables. And it says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Buried treasure. What's this all about? You see, back in that day and age, people had banks like we have today. But they're very hesitant to put their money or their valuables in a bank. Because if another country comes in and takes over their land, one of the first things they're going to do is they're going to go to the bank and take all the money for themselves. And so for a lot of people, rather than put their money and their possessions in a bank, they buried it in fields. Now imagine they bury it in a field, and somehow they die. And no one knows where they put it. In fact, there might be buried treasures in various parts of the world. In fact, there's different TV shows that talk about this type of a thing. You know, Adolf Hitler, you know, the terrible things he did to the, the Jewish people, the atrocities he carried out, but yet a lot of it was he and his henchmen, they stole the valuable things and the money of, of many of the people that they sent off to these concentration camps to be killed, most of them. And they took their stuff and their money and their valuables and, and they hid them. In fact, there's, you know, a show out called In Search of Nazi Gold. It really isn't Nazi gold, it's stuff they stole. And so this thing about buried treasure is not a new thing. Even pirates would bury treasure. 
And so this man is going out doing his ordinary day, and he's working the field, and he's maybe a, you know, plowing the field or something, and he, he comes across a buried treasure. And he realizes, wow, this is a very valuable treasure. But in that day and age, for him to claim that treasure, he has to own the field. And so what he does, he goes and sells everything he has and buys the field. And at that point, the treasure belongs to him. That's the way it worked in that day and age. He now owns that treasure, but he's willing to give everything he has to get it. We go on the next part of this parable. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. One finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. A lot of people, even in this day and age, love pearls, and the same was the case back then. And there's this man, he's, he's trying to look through various pearls, and he comes across one that he just is mesmerized by it. He wants to have this pearl. He goes out and sells what he has, and he, he buys this pearl that he now owns it. It's so valuable for him that he was willing to, to pay with everything he had to get this pearl of great price. Now, what's the point here? And the point is this. They found something that was so valuable to them that they were willing to give up everything they had for it. And really, the pearl being talked about here, or this buried treasure, what is it? It's the kingdom of heaven. Is coming to faith in Jesus Christ. And these parables are not saying that salvation is something you buy, that you have to pay for it. No. What it's saying is that once they found it, it was so valuable to them that they were willing to give up everything for it, that their lives followed after their treasure. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. That the things of this world, they come and go, but what we have in Jesus is something so valuable, it's worth all the money of the world and beyond that. And through faith in Christ, we have something so valuable. You know, do you realize that, you know, we may think, yeah, someday I'm going to experience heaven. There's going to be, it's going to be amazing. There's going to be streets of gold, and it's going to be so incredible in heaven. And that's true. It's beyond, I'm sure, our wildest dreams. Even the people that saw a glimpse of heaven, what they saw was way beyond what they could put into words for those that wrote in Scripture about heaven and what they saw. But the point is this, that even though heaven is going to be fantastic, it's going to be amazing, we're part of the kingdom of heaven even right now. And the joy of that kingdom should be in our hearts right now. And sometimes I think we take it for granted. When I was in high school, you know, many years ago, I, I, um, I was in, you know, the choir, and I actually played as a, the accompanist, piano accompanist for the high school choir. I was um, the president of my youth group. I played three sports, but I also worked a lot of jobs. I felt it was my responsibility to, to pay my way through school, and, and I worked hard. And my senior year, I, I, I took some of that money, and my father at the time wasn't, he wasn't very happy about me doing this. And I bought a stereo system. It was a big cabinet and two big speakers and, you know, a powerful amp and um, a turn, you know, table for playing record albums and the AM, FM, a, a two cassette player. I, I loved that thing. I just loved, you know, I played thousands and thousands of hours of music on that stereo system. And I had it for a number of years. But sometime later, a number of years later, a house fire hit the home where I was living. And pretty much all the things I owned, including that stereo system, were burned up in that house fire. The things were there one day, and the next day they were gone. And so often that's the way it is in this life. Things are here one day, they're gone the next. But I remember after the fire, that even as I drove away with pretty much just the clothes I had, everything else I was wearing, because everything else was destroyed in the fire, I was realizing, you know what? You can take away the worldly things but you can't take away my faith. You see, shortly after I bought that stereo system when I was after my senior year in high school, I received the most incredible treasure, the most incredible pearl, so to speak, in my life. 
I finally came to realize that Jesus lived and died and rose for me. I still remember the day when that reality hit me and I came to faith. And, and what I realized, I had something so valuable. Remember the excitement and the joy of being a new Christian, how excited I was. And I remember the first Christmas, it was my freshman year in college, and I came back home. And I went to worship with my, my family, like a 7 o'clock service. And we open up presents, and the only thing I can remember I got for a present was I got a sweater. I always seem to get a lot of sweaters at, at Christmas, especially living in Minnesota. But then I went back to the evening service, and the very late service, by myself. And I just remember going through that service and how excited I was to really understand that the greatest gift the world's ever received is Jesus Christ. And over all these years, 40 years since that time, I can't remember a lot of the Christmas presents I've received. And most of them, they fall, fall apart or they break over time or they wear out. But Christmas is as exciting to me now as it ever has been. Why? Because the gift of Jesus, it never fades. It never goes away. And even the closer I get to, as my years go on, and I know I'm getting closer to that one day going to heaven and seeing Jesus face to face, it's just the excitement is still there. But sometimes I can honestly say I've taken it for granted. I think sometimes we do as well. And the world gets in the way. And when the world gets in the way, so often we lose focus on how valuable the gift of Jesus is. Sometimes we tend to take things for granted. You know, for a while I lived in Utah and you could walk out my back patio and you could see the mountains. And over time, it, you kind of take things for granted. And I went through a number of months, I was going through a rough time, and, and one day I was driving and I looked up at the mountains and thinking, wow, those things are amazing. It was the first time in, in months I really took a good look at them. And the, the beauty of them all of a sudden jumped at me once again. But I think in a, even a greater scale, sometimes we lose focus on the value of what God has given to us in this faith we have in Jesus Christ, this gift the Holy Spirit has worked into our hearts. And how should we respond to this faith? And that's the last part of this parable in verses 51 and, and 52, chapter 13. And it says this, Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, Every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. What's that saying? See, right here is a treasure chest filled with the word of God, the valuable word fulfilled in Jesus Christ, the old and the New Testament. And this treasure is meant to go inside of us to go from these pages into our heart, our mind, and our lives and transform us, to live out the treasure. The treasure is Jesus, to be shaped more in the image of Jesus. That's how we're called to respond. You know, earlier I mentioned these guys were willing to give up everything they had for the treasure. Does that mean I have to give Jesus all my money? Do I have to give 100% of my offering, you know, of what I get to the, the offering to the church? I'm not saying that. What it's saying is this. Yeah, we should follow what God's word says pertain to these things, but everything we have is a gift from God. Everything we have is a blessing from God, and we've been blessed to be a blessing for others and to glorify God. And this treasure that we have is unlimited. And the point is this. Sometimes with the treasure, you think, I've got to keep it for myself because if I don't keep it for myself... You know, if I give it away, I'm not going to have as much. This treasure just keeps giving and giving and giving. It's totally unlimited. There's enough for everybody in the world. And we're called upon to share this treasure with others through what we say and through what we do to spread the kingdom of God. That's our calling. As we go through the series, Thy Kingdom Come, we are people to spread the kingdom because in the end, that's what matters. This life is temporary. This life is short in comparison to heaven. And we're meant to enjoy this treasure of Jesus even now. That even right now, every one of us here, we're a gazillionaire. Maybe there's no such word as that, but 
We're actually even more valuable than that. What we have is even of greater value than that. In fact, if you had a choice between your faith in Jesus Christ and all the money in the world, what would you choose? For me, I don't have to think about it for even a second. I choose Jesus. You see, we have unlimited value. Even in these challenging times, things may be difficult. Things may be tough. Maybe you're feeling lonely, isolated. Maybe you're, you're feeling like you're living in scarcity. Let me tell you, the true reality is this. We have unlimited value in Jesus Christ, and that's a reality right now. These are not just words. I pray that we take these words and we live them in our hearts. We let it come alive inside of us and, and live out this truth. We should be the most joyful people in the world when we realize how valuable this gift is we have in Jesus. And the more this joy comes through us, the people of this world are going to see us and say, why are you so joyful? We can tell them about this treasure that we have in Christ. We have unlimited value in Jesus. We have that treasure. We have that pearl of great price because of God's love for us, his grace, and giving us this gift of Jesus, and let's cherish it. And if we're taking it for granted, I pray that, that we change that attitude and realize how abundantly blessed we are right now. We are living in absolute abundance. Praise be to God for this gift of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we live in a world where so often it seems that there's scarcity all around us. But the reality is we're living in abundance because of you. Help us to realize how blessed we are. Help our hearts and our lives and the blessings you've given to us to follow the treasure that you've given to us in you. That our path follows you in what we say, what we do. That we take this treasure that you've put inside of us, Lord, and we share it with others. We share you with others. And Lord, no matter how difficult life can become, help us to keep this reality in the forefront of our hearts and our minds. We have unlimited value in you. We are truly abundantly blessed. Amen.